Hello YouTube and welcome to another one of my videos. This time it's not a gaming video, like normal. This time it's one of my scientific projects. I do a few of these projects, but I hardly actually put videos on YouTube about them. The only ones I have done is the Tesla coil and the thermite. I do do a lot of these projects actually, and I'm thinking now that it's actually pretty good to document them and do videos on them and show them with you guys out there, so that's why I've decided to start doing more sort of sciencey videos as well as my, or of course, gaming videos because that's what my channel is mainly about. Uh, so I've decided to come back to this laser project that I did um, in 2013, which is just a few months ago now. Um, it's a really good laser that I made for one of my projects, and that's why I've decided to, to uh, come back and do a video on it. So originally, I was going to make a laser out of computer parts using the diode from disk drives. Um, the heat sink, the power supply, PSU to actually run it, so all stuff like that. But I wanted it to be handheld like this one, because this one's pretty cool having it handheld. It's in a torch case, pretty cool one, so it looks somewhat professional, but pretty rough and cut, if, as you can see. Um, yeah, so I did that. Um, it's a 1 watt laser. Now how powerful is 1 watt? Usually you say, well, 1 watt, so that's sort of not very powerful, which one watt isn't really that powerful. But for a laser, hell yes it is. A standard laser pen is about one milliwatt. So your average key ring red laser pen is one milliwatt. There are a thousand milliwatts in a watt. So this is a one watt laser, a thousand times powerful than your average laser pen. Yes, very powerful. Now, um, is this legal? Yes it is. Because I didn't buy it, I made it, and it's only illegal to sell laser pens that powerful in the UK, which I'm, but I made it, I didn't buy it, so, yeah. Um, okay, so it's a 445 nanometer laser, which means it produces a blue laser, not red or green. Blue looks pretty cool, it's, uh, it's nice in the dark, nice blue, blue glow. Um, as well as that, I've also got safety goggles. Now, why have I got safety goggles? Because... If any of you ever get inspired by this video to make a laser, I must assure you, I'm obligated to, that it is absolutely essential for you to have laser goggles if you're ever messing about with a laser. Even an average laser pen is still pretty damaging, so always have safety goggles and make sure, mainly, make sure your safety goggles are right for the colour of laser. You may have noticed that this is red and my laser pen is blue. Believe me, that's how it should be. Red goggles protect you from the blue laser. Look up the wavelength of your laser and see what goggles you need to protect it. This also protects a little bit of green, I think. But uh, yeah, so these are essential. Always get these if you're ever messing about with lasers. Okay, so more about the laser pen itself. Uh, I bought the laser diode from eBay. Uh, one watt. It, this is it at the front. It came with its own lens, but I got a different one to make it a lot more powerful, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, uh, you need a driver to run lasers basically, you can't just plug a battery up to them because laser diodes are current hungry, so they'll keep drawing amps until you, it burns itself out. So what you need is a driver that will limit the amount of current. I just made a simple LM317 voltage regulator circuit, which is stored inside the front there, and hooked it up to two powerful lithium, lithium ion batteries at the back here, which I'll show you in a moment. And that connected up with the laser diode and the button of the laser is all we need to run it. Okay, so let's take a look at the laser itself. It's in a torch case. I wrapped some barrier tape around it, hazard tape, to make it look cool. Uh, the front of the actual torch wouldn't house all the equipment, so I just got this plastic lid and glued the diode onto the front. There's the button there. Just got a little strap to hold it on, uh, to attach to things, blah, blah. And you unscrew it at the front here, which I'll do now. Okay, so I've now taken the laser apart. We've got the front section here, which has the laser diode and lens, and inside it is the actual driver circuit. Now, I've done this very crudely. I've just sort of jammed it in and stuck foil to actually make the contacts. So that one wire is one contact and the foil is the other contact. Look inside it, looking inside the main body where the switch and batteries are, you've got, you see, a glued foil around there, connected to that, which creates one contact, and the top of the battery creates the second contact. These are the batteries I'm using. They're not AA. Um, I'm not sure what they are really. Uh, 3.7 volts each for a total of 7.4 volts. 
because I've got two of these. Uh, lithium ion. Um, yep, that's too great about them. They're very high power. That's why I got them. I didn't just use normal ones. But what's awesome about these and why I got them was because they also come with a charger and a plug for UK power. And that's really good, so I don't have to worry about wasting my laser, the power from the batteries, shining it everywhere, because I can just recharge them. I don't have to buy any new batteries. Um, I've, since I've had this, I haven't had to recharge these. I have optionally recharged these, just so I can get them at peak power to show people. Um, but these will last a long time, basically, because the driver will restrict the amount of current it takes. Also, I haven't done this, but it would have probably been a good idea to get a heatsink for the driver and put it in there, because the driver gets incredibly hot. Incredibly hot. It's unbelievable. Um, and it just radiates onto this. So it's even hot to turn the lens sometimes, uh, which is a bit dangerous. That's why I don't run it for long periods of time, but you should really use a heatsink. Um, so looking at the actual top of it, we've got a lens here. This isn't the one that came with the laser. The one that came with the laser looks pretty much exactly the same, but this one's different. This one is used to focus down the power to a really small spot so it can burn through things such as cardboard and plastic, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, yeah, this takes ages to unscrew. It's pretty long. Okay, there it is. So, inside there's the diode itself. Absolutely tiny thing. Tiny little thing. So we just screw that in, and obviously spinning this will change the focus of the laser, which I will demonstrate to you in a moment. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the laser whilst it's on. First of all, this is it without the actual lens at all. You see, you just get a massive, blind, blinding thing. It's basically a torch. You could use that as a normal torch. It's very bright. It's hard to look at even, uh, even still. Okay, so now I'm going to put the lens in. Now it's a screw on lens, so the further you screw it in, the more concentrated it becomes. So if I just put it, so a tiny bit of it is in, then we get it pretty much as least focused as it can be. So now it's just a massive circle, and the more we screw it in, the smaller it gets, and the more concentrated the beam gets. The lens is even starting to get hot now. Still getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it becomes extremely small. Now this is the point where it starts to burn through things. And you can keep twisting it and it starts getting a bit bigger again. And bigger and now it's fully in. So that's how you can focus it. Okay, I'm now pointing the camera out the window so you can't see much. I'm going to turn the laser on. I've got it as focused as possible but the further the laser goes the less focused it becomes. So you'll see what the target that it hits will actually be quite big. Look at that. It is absolutely crystal clear. The camera can't focus very well, but it points all the way to the sky. It is intense. It's just like a line. I could point it at another house over there. Don't want to point it for too long because people start getting suspicious and annoyed. But really, it is just fully see it. It's unbelievable. And when it rains, it's even more clear. So I've now turned the light off in my room and I'm going to shine it now. It quite actually lights up the whole room. If I point that away, oh my god. It's a bit hard to see, it won't really focus, but you can see now it's just sort of like a straight line. And a point, a blazing point. Okay, just to show you how powerful it is, I'm going to show you it burning through one of these, which is just an ordinary, ordinary CD case. I've got it at 9 centimeters away, and I've focused it as powerful as it can be. Now, this laser is a bit weird as the laser can sort of become more focused as it reaches 9 centimeters and then starts to get bigger again. So this is pretty much the optimum distance for it to burn through things. So it's quite hard to burn through things when the item is far away from the laser. Um, you can do it, but there's a limit. Also, um, this is black, bear in mind, and I'll show you why that's important in a minute. So let's see how long it takes to burn through. I'm not touching it, all that movement is and there we go, burnt through. How quick was that? I'll do it again, I'll move it. And... Now, burnt through. Look at all those burn marks I've been doing. Look at that one, that's massive. But how quick is that? Now, why I said it was black is, if I got the transparent front for this, or if I got a piece of paper, it wouldn't burn through it. It wouldn't burn through paper, yet it burns through plastic. Why? 
those of you who know anything about lasers, you know all a laser is is just light. It's just very, very concentrated, powerful light. And white absorbs light. Black reflects it all. So with something white, it wouldn't burn it, it would just absorb all the light. Whereas the black is trying to reflect it all and that's causing it to burn through it. But if you had a black piece of paper, it would imagine burn through it very quickly. So that's it burning through plastic. Um, that's pretty much all I want to show you about my laser. There's nothing much else really. So like I said, it's one watt, a thousand times powerful than your average one. Um, it's a fun project, rather short. I might make another one in future. Um, if I did, it'll either be green, because green's awesome, or an infrared one. An infrared laser is one where you can't actually see the laser beam, which is a bit annoying, but it can burn through things tremendously powerful. That sentence didn't make sense. I mean, it's tremendously powerful, so it can burn through things extremely thick um, and can awesome, like plastic and stuff. Um, and one more thing, actually. Whenever you're doing lasers, you might want to have something like this. This is just the front of a um, CD drive that I took off when I was actually getting the laser diode from the D CD driver, but then I broke it, so that's why I'm using this one I bought off eBay. This is metal, and that will pretty much stop anything. The laser won't go through that. So I normally have this at the back of whatever I'm burning through to stop it. And as you can see, it hasn't made a single mark on this. Um, if you want, I can just really turn the laser on. Put this here, see if it does actually make any mark. It's incredibly bright to look at, so don't ever do that. It will completely destroy your eyes. Um, let's take it away. Yeah, so as you can see, no mark. Yeah, that might be a mark there from previously, but there we go. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll have some more project videos up soon. I'm working on a fuser, I'm working on a marks generator, and I'm also working on a flyback transformer. So those videos will be up rather soon. Thanks, and thank you for watching the Sonicast. Goodbye.